Let's play a game. Close your eyes and imagine yourself digging a hole straight down, through the crust, through the mantle, right to the center of the earth. What do you see? A glowing ball of lava? A metallic sphere? Maybe a lost civilization with dinosaurs and giant mushrooms? Well, bad news. You would never get there. Not because you're out of shape or forgot your shovel, but because Earth's core is one of the most extreme, inhospitable, and frankly, mysterious places on the planet. And despite being right beneath our feet, we know less about it than we do about the surface of Mars. So what's really down there? Let's start with the basics. The Earth is like a giant peach. The crust is the skin, thin, brittle, and easy to crack. It's where we live, where mountains rise and oceans sink. But in the grand scheme of Earth's size, it's barely a shell. Oceanic crust is around three to six miles thick. Continental crust, maybe 20 to 45 miles? That's nothing compared to the rest. You'd think with all our modern tech, self-driving cars, AI writing term papers, billionaires playing space cowboy, we'd be able to dig more than a dent into our own planet. But no, the deepest hole humans have ever drilled is just 7.6 miles down. That's the Kola Superdeep Borehole, a Soviet project that started in the 1970s. It took them nearly two decades, and what did they find? Not lava, not glowing caverns, just heat, brutal, equipment-melting heat. Temperatures shot up to over 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and the rock? It stopped behaving like rock. It softened, warped, almost like drilling through hot plastic. Bits broke, metal warped, and the deeper they pushed, the more the Earth pushed back, with crushing pressure and unbearable temperatures. Eventually, they gave up not for lack of will, but because physics basically laughed in their face. So, while we've taken selfies on Mars and mapped the ocean floor, when it comes to going deep underground, we've barely scratched the skin of the apple. Basically, Earth said, nice try, and kicked us back up. Beneath the crust lies the mantle, which makes up about 84% of Earth's volume. It's not molten lava like cartoons might suggest, but it's not exactly solid either. Think of it as slow-moving hot rock, kind of like taffy that's been microwaved just a bit too long. The mantle flows, very slowly, driving the movement of tectonic plates on the surface. As you go deeper, temperature and pressure climb fast. By the time you're halfway to the center, you're dealing with temperatures over 3,600 degrees Fahrenheit and pressures that could crush a submarine into an aluminum can. And there are diamonds down here. Literally, the intense pressure can crystallize carbon into diamonds, many of which get blasted to the surface by volcanic eruptions. Nature's own pressure cooker, gifting us sparkly surprises. Now we're getting into the weird stuff. Around 1,800 miles down, we hit the outer core. It's a swirling sea of molten iron and nickel, spinning and churning like a furious ocean of metal. This outer core is a big deal. Its movement generates Earth's magnetic field, essentially turning our planet into a giant bar magnet with a protective force field. Without this field, solar radiation would fry us like bacon on a sidewalk, migrating animals would be hopelessly lost, and your compass would be about as useful as a chocolate teapot. But we've never seen the outer core directly. All our knowledge comes from indirect evidence, mostly seismic waves from earthquakes. These waves travel through through Earth and behave differently depending on the material they pass through. It's like doing an ultrasound on the planet. When P waves primary waves and S waves secondary waves pass through the Earth, we notice that S waves can't travel through liquid. So when they disappear beyond a certain depth, we know there's something liquid down there. That's how we figured out the outer core isn't solid. Fun fact, the churning of this liquid core is also what causes magnetic pole reversals. And yes, Earth's magnetic field has flipped many times. The last time was about 780,000 years ago. If it happened today, we'd probably survive, but satellites and power grids would have a very bad time. Deeper still, about 3,200 miles beneath the surface, we reach the inner core. This is the ultimate destination, a solid sphere of mostly iron and nickel, about 760 miles in radius. It's roughly the size of the moon, and just as inaccessible. Temperatures here soar to 9,000 to 10,800 degrees Fahrenheit, hotter than the surface of the sun. But the pressure is so intense, over 3 million times atmospheric pressure at sea level, that the iron doesn't melt. It's squeezed into a solid state, even under that insane heat. Now here's where things get truly strange. The inner core might not be one uniform chunk of metal. Some studies suggest it has a distinct inner inner core, a smaller region with slightly different properties, possibly aligned along a different axis. Others say the inner core spins at a different rate than the rest of the planet, maybe even in the opposite direction. That's right, the heart of the Earth could be doing its own weird, mysterious dance. Why we'll probably never get there. You're probably wondering, why can't we just drill our way down, lay 
layer by layer until we reach the core. Well, let's talk logistics. First, there's the heat. We're talking thousands of degrees Fahrenheit. Our best drilling technology melts at a tiny fraction of that. Then there's the pressure. The weight of all that rock above would crush any tunnel or probe we tried to send. We would need materials that don't even exist yet, stronger than anything we can make today. And finally, distance. The center of the Earth is about 3,960 miles down. That's like trying to tunnel through a wall of fire and granite using a spoon. Even if we could invent sci-fi tech that could survive the journey, we'd need an enormous amount of energy to make it work. Also, there's the issue of time. A drilling operation that ambitious would take centuries, maybe longer, and that's assuming it works at all. And even if you somehow survive the trip, you'd be in a place with no light, unimaginable pressure, and searing heat. Basically, it would be like standing in the middle of a star, minus the Instagram-worthy glow. So how do we know what we know? If we can't go there, how do we know what's down there? Seismic waves are our main tool. Every time an earthquake happens, it sends out vibrations that travel through the planet. By studying how those waves bend, reflect, or disappear, scientists can infer what materials they pass through. It's a bit like sonar, but for the whole Earth. Then there's magnetic data, gravity measurements, lab simulations, and more recently, neutrino detectors. Yes, those ghost particles from the sun that can pass through entire planets. Some new research suggests we might use them to learn even more about Earth's innards. But the truth is, much of our model of the Earth's interior is still based on educated guesswork. Really good guesswork, but guesswork nonetheless, what the core tells us about the planet. Even if we can't reach it, the core shapes almost everything about life on the surface. It creates our magnetic field, which protects us from solar radiation. It affects plate tectonics, which in turn drives earthquakes, volcanoes, and even the shape of continents. The heat from the core powers convection currents in the mantle. Without it, Earth might be a geologically dead rock, like Mars. And understanding the core helps us understand other planets too. Why does Venus have no magnetic field? Why is Mars geologically dead? Comparing their cores to Earth's gives us clues. And if that wasn't enough, some scientists believe the dynamics of the core could influence climate over very long timescales, not directly, like greenhouse gases, but by shifting tectonic plates and affecting volcanic activity. Volcanoes, in turn, spew out gases that affect the atmosphere. Here's a fun and slightly terrifying question. What if something changed in the core? If the outer core stopped moving, we'd lose our magnetic field. That means more radiation from the sun hitting the surface. Satellites would go haywire. GPS? Gone. Animal migrations? Totally scrambled. Even worse, Earth's atmosphere could slowly erode away over millions of years, just like what may have happened to Mars. And if the inner core stopped spinning? Honestly, we don't know. It could mess with Earth's rotation ever so slightly. It might even change the length of the day by a tiny amount. Not enough to notice, but enough for scientists to freak out. Some researchers even believe the core might wobble over time, and those wobbles could explain certain mysterious changes in Earth's rotation or magnetic field flips. The times when the magnetic north and south poles literally switch places. That last happened 780,000 years ago. And guess what? We might be overdue for another one. Some evidence even suggests the inner core has recently slowed down a bit, compared to its historical rate. No one knows exactly why or what it means. Maybe it's just taking a nap. Or maybe it's part of a natural cycle we're only just beginning to understand. There's something poetic about the fact that the center of our planet, our literal foundation, is a place we may never reach. It reminds us that Earth still has secrets, that even in the age of satellites, AI, and space telescopes, there are mysteries hiding right under our feet, that some frontiers are still untouched. And maybe, just maybe, that's what makes them beautiful. So the next time you look down at the ground, remember, beneath your feet is a journey you'll never take, a story you'll never see with your eyes, but one that's unfolding, spinning, and burning, keeping you safe every single day. And that's what's actually at the center of the Earth. And why, for now, we'll never get there. 